This picture will show the sequence of machining and other incidental operations of the 3-inch anti-aircraft M42 shell as manufactured at Frankfurt Arsenal by the upsetter method. Frankfurt Arsenal is located in a thickly populated area in the northeast section of the city of Philadelphia. This fact is brought out to emphasize the point that no hazards are involved in machining shell and that machining operations can be done in commercial machine shops located in thickly populated cities and towns. This shows a stack of two and three-eighths inch diameter X1335 steel bars as they are received from the steel mills. The bars are cut off in a high-speed cutoff machine in lengths of 22 and one-half inches each. It should be noted that four bars are cut at one time. These four bars will make eight three-inch shell body forgings, as will be shown later. The cutoff lengths are placed in a high-frequency induction furnace, where in approximately 75 seconds, one end is heated to a temperature of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. Taking the bar with the heated end from the induction furnace, it is placed in the first station of the upsetting machine, where the heated end of the bar, in one heat, passes through four stations. Coming out from the fourth station as a completed three-inch anti-aircraft shell forging. The interior cavity of this forging is finished to the finished drawing dimension size. This is the bar before heating. This shows the cross-sectional shape of the bar after passing the first station, the second station, the third station, the fourth or final station. The opposite end of the bar is next heated and forged in the same manner as was shown in the preceding views. This shows the forgings after completion on the national upsetter. After the forgings have been completed on the national upsetter, they are placed in a vertical crank press where they are sheared. The forgings are now conveyed to the outside of the building where they receive an air quench. When using X1335 steel, if the forgings are given an air quench, as shown here, heat treatment becomes unnecessary because the air quench improves the physical properties to the extent that they meet the minimum physical properties demanded for a high explosive shell. The rotating bands for the shell are cut from tubing of gilding metal on a hollow spindle lathe with collet chuck. The bands are next annealed. They are then pickled and washed. A percentage of the shell is selected from which tensile test specimens are taken. The test specimen is cut from the walls of the shell. 
It is machined to the standards of a 0 .505 inch threaded test specimen. The test specimen is next placed in a standard hydraulic tensile testing machine. Attached or connected to the testing machine is an automatic recorder which records a graphic curve showing the proportional elastic limit of the steel in the specimen. When the proportional elastic limit has been determined, the recording instrument is detached from the testing machine. The specimen is then broken. This gives the tensile strength of the steel. After a reading has been obtained to determine the tensile strength, the specimen is taken from the testing machine. It is placed in a fixture and measured for elongation and reduction in area. The combined results of this test give the physical properties of the steel and determine whether or not the heat treatment was satisfactory. The forgings are next placed in shot blasting machines where a scale is removed from the forged cavity. It is essential that the cavity not only be free from scale, but it must be free from rough spots and sharp edges because explosive is to be loaded into this cavity. After the forgings have been shot blasted, they are placed on conveyors which carry them into the shell machining shop. On arrival in the shell machining shop, the shell is centered. In the next operation, the shell is faced on the open end for a rough depth of cavity. Process inspection on a portion of the work at the various stages is made to ensure proper functioning of the machines. Next, the shell is finished turned on a vertical lathe. Process inspection is made frequently at this stage.
From here, the shell goes to a drilling and tapping machine where a set screw hole is drilled and tapped. The shell now goes to a multomatic vertical lathe which bores the face, undercuts and taps the front end, removes the lug on the rear end, rough cuts and finishes the base, and does the band seating operation. This shows the shell as it comes from this machine with the mouth undercut and tapped. The band seat and grooves cut. And with the base finished. In the next operation, the shell is notched. This notching is to provide points at which the fuse can be staked in position. From the notching machine, the shell goes to a stamping machine where the caliber, type, manufacturer's initials, and lot number are placed on the body of the shell. After stamping, the shell is placed in a knurling machine where the band seat is knurled. The shell is now ready for the application of the band. This operation is performed on a hydraulic press. It will be noted that the band is applied cold and that the pressure used to place the band in the band seat to ensure a tight band is 1,000 pounds gauge pressure. After the band has been applied, it is turned to finish size. The machine used in this operation is semi-automatic and its capacity is approximately 1,000 shell per eight hour day.
After the band has been turned on the shell, it is placed in an electric welding machine where a steel disc is welded to the base of the shell. It will be noted that the disc is securely attached to the base by an overlapping spot weld. After the shell has had the base cover applied, it is washed in a hot soda bath. It is then rinsed in clear hot water to remove all grease, dirt and other foreign matter. The shell now goes to the final inspection table where it is gauged by the inspector for the following principal dimensions. Thread at mouth. Mouth diameter. Burrelet diameter. Diameter of body. Diameter of band. Diameter at rear of band. Tightness of band. Overall length. Placement of band. Base thickness and concentricity of the interior bore with the outside diameter. Not only does the shell have dimensional tolerances, but weight tolerances as well. Therefore, if dimensional tolerances are taken advantage of to the fullest extent, shell may be produced which do not come within the weight tolerances. Liberal tolerances are placed on the drawings for the convenience of the manufacturer, who must decide which ones to take advantage of or to decrease in order to bring the completed shell within the weight tolerance. It should always be remembered in shell manufacture that lightweight shell are a frequent cause of rejection. After inspection, the threads at the mouth of the shell are given a protective coating grease. The set screw is inserted in the locking pin hole. The shell next goes to the paint spray booth, where the interior is sprayed with a coat of acid-proof black paint. The exterior is given a protective coating of clear lacquer. Shells are then packed in corrugated containers for shipment to the loading and assembly plant.